Hello and welcome to Soulwise with me, Semily Sherry. And in this episode, I'm reaching my third and final instalment of the saga of installing a heat pump in my house and being guided in the process throughout by Spirit Animal Mouse. This final episode you'll be very glad to hear is called Strength in Numbers. At this point, I'm looking forward to not thinking about heat pumps for a long time. So I imagine you feel the same regarding reading about them. However, as so often happens in fairy tales, Spirit Animal Mouse had a final and third magic message to weave. So I felt it was well worth writing this last episode in the saga. At the end of part two, in previous podcast, our terrible installation had been rectified and the electricians had got the system up and running. We thought that was the end of the ordeal and prepared to relax, finally. Alas, it was merely the start of a new challenge. Getting the hardware fitted and functioning is one thing, setting the software to run according to best efficiency and lowest cost and to suit your household's habits is something else. At this point, we'd been told we'd never have to touch the control panel. Mm hmm nothing could have been further from the truth. The hot water stopped working after only a day and a half. On top of that, we realized the system was costing us 20 pounds a day to run. This was unsustainable, especially for a half working system. So we switched it off in exasperation. After all, by now, we'd got well used to living without heating and hot water and were quite blasé about not having it. We made more calls and sent off more emails to the installers. They returned three days later to find the hot water was still wired to run off the immersion only. This had been doubling our electricity consumption. So they switched it, as should have been done initially, to the heat pump. We also had one radiator not warming at all. To try and remedy that, the installer switched the circulation pump. Now that's the thing that pumps water around the pipes into the radiators up to full blast and left it like that. Now I'm very sorry for the technical details and I hope you'll never have cause to remember what a circulation pump is so you have my unconditional blessing to forget it immediately but it is relevant to this tale. After this most recent visit, we were shocked at how much noise the radiators and the cylinder were making. It was almost impossible to sleep at night. You're supposed to run a heat pump 24 seven for best efficiency, so it's on all the time. The power it was taking and so the running costs still seemed ridiculously high. Meanwhile, having lost all confidence in the knowledge of the installers, we began researching Heat Pumps 101 online to give us some sense of agency again. We were weary of waiting for the installers to get to us, and when they did, not actually solving the issues. An ex-neighbour suggested we join a Facebook group for UK and Ireland heat pump owners. Well, that was a game changer to say the least. We discovered with shocking speed that most installers leave a system in your house set to the highest power usage and least cost effective setting. In low income houses on the Eco4 grant, there was no conversation about how to use the control panel or which settings you may need to adjust to get the best results. Busily poring over his laptop online, my partner shouted in triumph as he read the key statement, it's all about a low flow rate. So it couldn't be good having our circulation pump turned up to the max high flow, right? Right. Rather hesitant about the unknown result, we turned it down to the lowest setting. Hey presto. The quiet was blissful, the radiators were far warmer, and there was a noticeable drop in energy consumption. Hmm. Step one complete. 
Next, we found a Facebook group that was specifically for owners of our particular make and model of heat pump. It's an LG Therma monoblock, in case you're interested, which you're probably not. But I've reluctantly had to become an expert, so I'm blatantly flaunting my knowledge. I even briefly considered changing career to heating engineer. Uh, did I mention before it really helps to engage your sense of humour at times like these? Anyway, on this Facebook group there are professional engineers, really clued up amateur enthusiasts and experienced owners. All of them happy to answer my stupid questions with endless patience and useful information. I even spent half an hour on the phone with one qualified heating engineer who talked me through how to amend all the settings on the control panel. The installers hadn't even set the correct date or time. I mean, really, that's pretty basic, isn't it? And if someone was adventurous enough to set a programmed schedule for hot water, say, they'd have wondered why it was going on and off at random days and times. It turns out that for a heat pump to run most efficiently and affordably, you need to use something called weather compensation. This is artificial intelligence that monitors the outside temperature and adjusts the heat produced in the house according to that to maintain your desired indoor temperature. It ensures the system use, uses minimum power at all times and so saves you a lot of money. The installer made no mention of that and didn't know anything about it. A knowledgeable individual had uploaded a brilliant document to the Facebook group. It described in detail all the settings for weather compensation and how to adjust them to what you need. This is unique for each house, so there's always some tweaking to do, but if you use the basic settings given in the document, you have a great base point from which to start that tweaking. As I posted of our horrors on the Facebook groups, I immediately had many responses from people with similar experiences of the Eco4 initiative. Familiar accounts of bodged installations which resulted in damage to their homes, then poorly programmed systems that resulted in ridiculous monthly bills. One poor woman had spent four and a half thousand on electricity in one year. Others were also managing terminally ill parents, handicapped children and serious health conditions of their own. Don't worry, I am going to bring this all back to spirit animal mouse now. Mice are small creatures and might be considered inconsequential, but in high numbers they can have an astounding effect. Both China and Australia suffer from mouse plagues that devastate grain crops and seriously damage the farming economy. They certainly can't be ignored and they demand that action has to be taken to address the situation. On Facebook, those of us who have been impacted by poor installations can come together, not only to share stories, empathise, give support and exchange advice when we have it, crucially to make each other feel that we're not alone and that our united voices are so much more audible. Some of us are now working together to raise awareness of this growing problem with MPs, installers, the media and the general public. Hopefully the grant programme will be more carefully policed in future with stricter quality control of installations. Customers will be talked through the important settings on the control panel and pointed to sources of help if they're unsure about what to do. As Mouse knows, many littles make a lot. There's strength in numbers. In a play on words, which I always love, setting the correct numbers on the control panel also brought me confidence and empowerment. The key to effective operation is truly in the details, as Mouse had already told me. I no longer felt helpless and dependent on installers, who by this time knew less than I did about how to use heat pump software. To end this epic three-part series, I'd like to go back to the spirit animal Mouse message of abundance. 
We do love the heat pump now. The warmth it delivers is much healthier. It feels lighter and less stuffy in the house, like being outside on a pleasantly warm day. Here on the other side of the trauma, we can say that all the difficulties and delays mean we've ended up with a system that's better than we would have had. On the reinstallation, we were able to ask for adjustments with our greater knowledge. We decided to keep an existing towel rail radiator, move one radiator and replace a small for a larger version. If everything had gone well first time, we wouldn't have known to make these amendments and we would have had regrets. So if you want to become more eco-friendly and get yourself off oil and gas, I do heartily recommend you go for a heat pump. My top tips would be find a local installer if you can. Never go with someone who cold calls you. Go through the list of providers on your council list and check out their reviews and ratings carefully to eliminate the bad ones. Take a look on the Heat Geek website to see if they're installing under the Eco4 grant. These guys have all been checked out for appropriate qualifications and standard of work. Once the work is done, join a Facebook group for help and support that's invaluable and probably far more helpful than you might get from your installers. I'll leave you now so I can relax in my cozy house, pondering what colors I want to paint the newly plastered walls. It's invitingly warm in here and I hope mice won't be tempt tempted to move in again, not for a while at least. <laughs> So with that, I will leave you again for this episode and look forward to speaking, you, speaking to you next time. And I promise you that the next episode and probably all the episodes to come won't mention heat pumps ever again. Sending you my love and blessings and for now, goodbye.